Hello and welcome to On Air with Elk River Treatment Program for Teens, the residential program of Pinnacle Behavioral Health. I'm Selena Mason, the Director of Marketing and Outreach. Today we welcome back Penny Baker, who is a licensed counselor and Director of Clinical Services for the programs of Pinnacle Behavioral Health. We're so glad you came back to us, Penny. Thanks for having me. What you got today? Today I thought we would talk a little bit about boundaries with parents. Um, Over the years and seeing kids in about every environment you can think of, from school setting, outpatient counseling, residential, this is probably the most common issue that comes up in, in families and with kids of the family work that you really have to do to to help the families really build strength and to help parents be the most effective that they can be is taking a, a real honest look at what kind of boundaries do you have with your kids? Well, I know here um, at Elk River, some of the admission calls that we get, parents often say, I, I don't I don't know what happened. I don't know what went wrong. I mean, you know, my kid was this way and now they're this way. And that sounds like maybe they didn't recognize there was an issue with boundaries. That can be part of it. You know, there's a lot of reasons that uh, kids end up having behaviors, and typically that's because they have um, an unresolved loss that they've experienced that they just don't know how to cope with. And usually kids are going to find some creative way to avoid feeling pain, so they're going to usually act out in some way, and that's usually what parents notice is the acting out. Right. More so than that underlying pain that may have been the the root cause or the core issue related to that pain. And when we're working with kids on recognizing whatever painful event that was, one of the things that often comes up in addition to whatever experience they have is they often talk about how the relationship with the parents impacted their ability to work through that issue. Now, now let me get clear before people completely hit the pause button or just stop it yeah, or the delete it. ringing off the hook, I got to say. <laughs> um, when I'm talking about addressing and really looking at what our boundaries are as parents and how that impacts our kids, I'm not doing that to to blame parents for misbehaviors of kids or to give an excuse to kids for um, their misbehavior. I want to be very clear on that. I'm bringing up this topic of boundaries as as a, a prevention of really having parents take a, a close look at their parenting style and look at what styles they have and how those styles may have a long-term impact on their kids' behavior. Because hopefully if we can catch it early, you can identify it now you can make some tweaks in your parenting styles. So what I'm going to go over are a couple of um, pretty general styles that we've seen over the years that have had a major impact on kids and their response to trauma or their response to an adverse event they've experienced or even, you know, your everyday challenges that kids face and that families face of their ability to cope with it often can be uh, impacted by the types of boundaries that they have with their parents, um, including the behaviors that they have. So I'm going to give you some some basic categories that, you know, as parents, I, I think it's important to really self-assess, decide which category you, you find yourself in, and we'll talk a little bit about the impact that might have on your kids and ways you can look at self-correcting. Okay. So the first kind of boundary description that I want to talk about is if you have a style as a parent that your boundaries with your kid is that you're a too strict parent. And when I mean too strict, and sometimes that's, you know, every family is a little bit different based on their family values and the structure they provide. And that individuation with each of the families are important for what's important to you and your belief system. So I don't mean taking that away, but you have to really be careful that when you set your standards and expectations for your kids growing up, that you adjust those expectations based on age and ability. 
and allow as they get older, as they're showing some responsibility, it's important to loosen some of those boundaries where you actually give them an opportunity to grow, give them an opportunity actually sometimes to screw up or make mistakes where they can learn from those mistakes. So sometimes we have parents whose boundaries have been too strict, where the rules were too tight, the kids were too sheltered, so they didn't have an experience to to learn how to problem solve because everything was so controlled in the family and by the family system that they never learned how to make a decision on their own. And then they get into adolescence and adulthood, and they don't know how to cope with some certain things because they never had to, because the parents kind of controlled everything, took care of everything, or the rules were so strict, they never had a social outlet or were able to experience or make their own mistakes. So that too strict parent can actually cause some developmental delays and that child being able to grow and learn from mistakes. That boundary would be a too strict boundary. A too strict boundary. So yes. what what a, I'm I'm assuming there's a not strict enough or and absolutely <laughs> a, too our, loose. A too soft or, <laughs> yeah. or too soft or too loose boundaries. Right. And this is when you have um, a parent that may have um, no rules at all or very limited rules um, or, you know, you the kid is not even aware of what the rules are in the family or there's not a lot of expectations that are given of, you know, that you go to school or you make your bed or you make a certain grade or you follow through or, you know, here are the here's your curfew or here are the rules of the house. So when you have a a kid that you are not providing enough structure for, you're going to have some of the opposite issues of where a kid is not going to fare well when they get into school or, or, or in a job where they have to follow rules and have to follow standards. They're not going to know how to do that because they've never had a limit or a boundary set for them which is going to cause some major complications for that. The other thing in that is we know that having boundaries for kids, having expectations and set rules and set schedules and that structure, that boundary for kids, no matter the age, always provides a sense of safety. No matter how much they push back for it or they dislike it, it does provide a sense of safety and security because they know what to expect. So when you have boundaries that are too soft with your kid, you run into really affecting their sense of safety. Um, And that can vary along the age range, especially for younger kids, especially that can affect the sense of safety. For older kids, you know, you need to keep in mind that if you don't have really solid boundaries for them, They're automatically, developmentally, part of the natural part of being a teenager is to push back and push limits. And if you don't have solid boundaries that, again, allow them to make some mistakes, but is a safety net for them if they go too far to hold that boundaries, then they're at higher risk of really doing things because they will continue to push that boundary until you finally set one. And a lot of times we see kids that really push the boundaries to using drugs, drinking too much, driving too fast, being sexually promiscuous because they keep pushing the boundary and they're going to keep pushing till someone says stop. So if the parents don't have a set boundary for that, they're going to keep going till someone, which unfortunately sometimes that's a criminal justice system or getting expelled from school and someone else has to establish that boundary because adolescents are built and made to push boundaries. And if one's not set for them, they're going to keep pushing it. Well, and I would think having set boundaries would make parenting a little bit easier in that you don't have to make a decision um, in a, in, when you're angry as a parent. If you're angry or you're frightened or upset about something, you already have that set boundary and you know the child either crossed it or didn't it. So there's praise or, or restriction you know, coming their way. I, 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 I think it would take some of the guesswork out for the parent as well as the child. Absolutely. And that's if, you know, a good kind of way to measure, do you have 
nice middle of the road boundaries that aren't too soft or too hard or ask yourself, is it fair, firm, and consistent? Those are the key points in really establishing healthy boundaries. And if you have that, it is going to provide a sense of safety. Again, they're not going to act like they like it. But in the long run, that is something that's important to have that sense of safety of knowing what to expect. And that also allows them to to grow and develop really as healthy people and to individuate. And as they as they get older, again, you constantly have to reevaluate that at each developmental stage because the boundaries you set and what you determine that would be fair, firm, and consistent for a six-year-old may not be fair, firm, and consistent for a 13-year-old or even then a 16-year-old or an 18-year-old. So you do have to constantly reevaluate that, and you also have to keep in mind the boundaries that you set for for your child, if you have other kids in the fa- in in your family, are you being consistent between your children of what those boundaries are? Because creating chaos in the family when you have different expectations for different kids or different boundaries for different kids, unless it's related to different ages, yeah, that's what I was. Or ask. different risk levels. There's a little difference there, but if you have You know, if you have that family culture set and those boundaries set, that here are my boundaries and expectations, here here are how they adapt as they developmentally become more mature, become more responsible, or showing responsibility, that you base it on the, the demonstration of responsibility of how you loosen those boundaries over time, not loosen, expand. How you expand those boundaries <laughs> over time, it, yeah, yeah. Um, is going to help your kid really develop into long term a self sufficient, well rounded kid with high self esteem because you give them a safe practice arena um, as they're as they're getting older. But there is another. There, I mentioned earlier we're going to talk about three. So you know oh. it's like the. Uh, what is the old um, story about, you know, this the, the three little bears, this chair's too hard, this one's too Goldilocks. soft, Goldilocks? <laughs> so, um, you know, so you may be wondering, well, we've talked about too soft mm-hmm. and we've talked about, or too loose, or we've talked about too strict. Well, um, our third one isn't going to be the just right one. Oh, I thought it was. Yeah. No, just right is kind of what we just described. That's supposed of, to be expected. Of, um, that's what we expect. So we're going to, our three things are focused on where we can really get um, kind of off, off center with um, what's a good parenting approach. So our third one, um, which, which can get really complicated uh, for kids and very confusing for kids even sometimes more so than too strict or too loose with your boundaries. Can I guess? Can I guess? Yes. Because I was going to, I wrote it down to ask. Two different households. Yes. But you know what? I'm going to use the word inconsistent boundaries. Okay. All right. But we commonly see that when in divorce situations or if there's two parents that live in two different households and they have different rules, different expectations, different boundaries that becomes very confusing for a kid but it's even more complicated when we see that with a lot of kids that even in the same household oh. with two parents yeah that the boundaries are inconsistent where if i go to mom i'm going to get this answer if i go to the other parent i'll get this answer and they're not the same one and the parents haven't gotten on the same page of what the expectations and rules are in the house can create a lot of confusion for a kid. Um, and because I would think who do you con- trust? Conflict in the whole family. Conflict in the whole family, absolutely. Dysfunction in the family mm-hmm. is what that will create. But you have a kid, and especially younger kids, you have more of the sense of, again, that sense of um, who do I trust? You know, how do I gain a sense of safety if? especially in the same household or, or, you know, separate households. Well, mom says this is the truth. Dad says this is the truth. Well, 
They can't both be true. If I'm a little kid, that's how I'm a, they can't both be true. So someone's not telling me the truth. So as a younger kid, it has a sense, who do I depend on? Who do I trust? Which then also um, really is interpreted by a little kid of, if I can't trust mama or daddy, then how do I trust anyone in this world? And that creates a sense of fear, I'm sure. Absolutely. You have fear. You'll have self-esteem issues. You can have increased anxiety. You can have all sorts of things that that develop um, over something basic as two different sets of rules. Um, and even more so with, with divorced parents. And that can be a whole different section uh, um, podcast that maybe we talk about later. Yeah, I'm going to write that one down is divorced parents because you run into with inconsistent boundaries happen a lot Mm -hmm. if they don't have a real solid co-parenting plan that they're following through with because then you have a kid especially when they reach adolescence whether it's in the home or out of the home they do what we call mom and poppin (laughs) if if they know that mom and daddy have different Maybe different value systems, maybe different rules, different expectations. I'm a smart kid. I'm going to go to the parent that's going to get me what I want. May may not be what I need or what's healthiest for me, but I'm going to have studied you enough to, one, figure out who do I go to to get what I want, but I'm also, as an older teen, I'm going to learn how to manipulate this to my benefit of, since I know you guys disagree and you don't have the same boundaries for me, how do I play you two against each other? Because if you two are focused on your conflict and having different boundaries, I can go off and do whatever I want. You're probably not even going to notice that I've done it because you guys are all wrapped up as parents in your own conflict over what the boundaries should be. So we need to get on the same page if if we're parents. Absolutely. In the house, out of the house, there needs to be a very clear set of what those boundaries are. Are you going to write a book so that we can just look through it and check (laughs) check them off? You know what? That that would be great. You know, and there's a ton of books out there on um, healthy boundaries with parents and parenting books. And, you know, people can reach out to us if they want to email our info line and be happy to give them some recommendations on some books for that. But one of the things you do have to keep in mind is be careful in reading um, too many self-help books or people that give you a very specific protocol of here's the boundaries, you, specific boundaries you need for your family. Because every family is different. Right. And your boundaries that you set for your family is going to be based on your value system and is going to be based on your particular family culture, and it's important to respect that. So at the same time, it's more about, you know, evaluating, are my boundaries clear enough for my child knows what to expect, knows what the rules are in our house? As parents, are we using integrity to really evaluate, do we have boundaries that are strict enough to provide safety, but... Did they provide flexibility enough to allow some growth? But also, like I said earlier, are the boundaries fair, firm, and consistent for my child at this specific age and whatever risk that may be there for that particular kid? Thanks, Penny. I mean, that's a lot to think about. It's it's really hard to be a parent. I don't Absolutely. Think, I don't think people give parents enough credit about how hard it is to be a parent and how hard the work you have to put into it. Well, it's absolutely, I think, one of the most important jobs that anyone has to do is being responsible for the upbringing of another human being. That's a lot. Yeah. Well, if people have questions um, or they want some, maybe some recommended reading, I'm going to direct you to info at elkrivertreatment.com. You can send a request by email, or you can visit our website at elkrivertreatment.com, and we will have a list of recommended reading on our website. And stay tuned for our next podcast. It's coming up. Thanks. Thanks.